Okay, ihr habt es verdient.
ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, episode 43. Ah! Stop. Come on, guys. Okay. That's your music. Yeah, that's my music. <laughs> yeah, today with special guest... Gex. Gex. <laughs> with special guest Mick Wall uh, from Wiesbaden, close to Frankfurt. I mean, for yes. those guys who don't know where Wiesbaden is, um, when the, the airplanes kind of land from the US, they usually they have only two ways to come in. Yes. And the one that I know best is the one that flies over Wiesbaden. All right. What, whatever it's uh, okay <laughs> i didn't know but for sure I'm yeah um yeah we played a, a, a little tune from the past um billy copham, billy copham yeah uh, 73 71 some early 70s lee, uh, lee sklar lee uh, lee sklar Scla on the bass yeah. doodle doo and um Tom Bolin? tommy Bolin, the killer guitar player that later played in deep purple and then died too early too early yeah because he was too good and too many drugs, but this was the 70s, you know. We are we are a bit different generation, <laughs> um, thankfully, which means um, we don't have the drug problem. <laughs> and we never get that because you are doing sports as well, you look yes, fit. Yes, yes. Actually, I'm a, I'm a football player. See, this guy we, is... We accidentally got a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it goes. Yeah. Um, well... Today's episode we had titled about clean tones, mm -hmm. um, about uh, a few pedals, but first I want um, a little bit more introduction about Mick here. Um, for me, it, it, it is a funny thing about Mick. I know you for a couple of years from trade shows in Frankfurt and um, you also have a dad that's also playing in a yes, band, yes. Tom Wall, yes. and um, Bernhard Wittmann, the keyboard player I played with, he played with him, so I, I heard, huh, you, you play with the Walls. And yes, <laughs> and we're actually from, from, from Saarbrücken. My family, from my father's side, um, yeah. they, they come from Saarbrücken. So my roots are actually, half of my roots are here. Okay. Yeah, so it's the first time that I've been to the Brücken. Oh, really? The second time, sorry, the second, second time. Second time, yeah. 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 So, okay. Um, well, sometimes we have to go and visit our past in a way. And, um, but here, the good thing about Germany and our region is, how long did you drive? Two hours? Or? Yeah, the max. The max. It yeah. was an accident which actually... Was a little... Took longer. a little longer, but yeah. Yeah. roughly... 130, 145 yeah. maybe. Pretty cool. Yeah, Pretty cool. close, very close. Yeah. So having a dad who is also a killer guitar player, um, I, I think there's like a, a, a few aspects about that because my dad is not a, a real musician, but he can sing. <laughs> and he, made, he stopped my singing career just with one little thing. When I started to sing, you know, like, hey, Jude, something like this, okay. you know, with my try a soft voice and then when I was pushing a bit harder yeah. he said hey God, son you know this is totally wrong it goes like la you right, know okay, all right. so and this was the end of my singing career okay. so how was your youth your childhood with your dad how, how did you find your way into what you're doing now yeah I mean he was the biggest influence actually in, 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 in my Music life mm -hmm. because he's maybe a professional. in the in, in the real life too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. big influence, and he showed me everything about the of uh, about playing guitar, about um, the business. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't know. But I was a young kid, you know, and I was looking what he was doing, and I mean, I had my my opinions to it, you know. But uh, at first, he was of course he was my teacher, mm -hmm. and. Um, um, He's, he comes from the blues and the jazz, so we listen to West Montgomery, Django Reinhardt, mm. um, Tel Farlow, mm -hmm. um, George Benson, all these kind of great guitar player. And so was my, actually, my, my, my first steps were uh, in this music, actually. Yeah. And um, we were always jamming in the, in the living room in mm -hmm. the evening, and um, I was actually his, his human looper. So I played guitar, I did, I did the rhythm stuff, you know, yeah. like jazzy, blues, jazz stuff. And he was soling so, over it yeah, and nice. he was giving me tips. Hey, 
if you if you accompany somebody, use your thumb, make it make it warm sounding. Be, be check out the rhythm. Don't be too whatever, you know. In the present, and, yeah, don't yeah. Get into my way. I mean, he was always like in. We did this these things. this mm -hmm. and um, I loved it I mean it was great my father was playing over it and I did the yeah yeah <laughs> that's really, that's actually that's his music he's he's a, he's a blues jazz player yeah that's where his heart beats for actually but yeah. he did a lot of other stuff I mean he does he does he did studio stuff he did um, lots of funk pop funk jazz all kinds of blues yeah, yeah. to me the Frankfurt area mm -hmm always seems to be more soul, blues, funk, black in a way, in Germany. Mm -hmm. And that's probably down to the American soldiers, air base. Can be, yes, of course. Yeah. 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 I remember when I was a teenager, um, here the Saarbrücken radio station was mm -hmm. not about that music, mm -hmm. but there was AFN radio, yeah. American Forces Network. Yeah. And me being like 10 years old, they had this cool, you know, get rid of the you know funky music yeah. and the groovy stuff that you couldn't find anywhere else in Germany at that time okay and maybe Frankfurt area was connected to that music with those American soldiers earlier than the rest of the country I mean in our area there are, there, there are lots of barracks yeah housings with For Americans the soldiers, lived, actually yeah. military and um, they were always around us I mean it was usual, yeah. you know, and it's great, it's great, yeah, of, I mean... Of course, yeah. And so when, when you watched your dad play, yeah. um, I guess he took you uh, to the concerts when he played. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I wanted to be a part of it because, I mean, I was learning, you know. Yeah. Whenever he played, I was learning too. Yeah. Did he put you on stage? Yes, sometimes. I mean, at the, <laughs> at the age of 15, 16, I don't know. Um, when he was playing with his funk band, um, he sometimes, yeah, put me on stage, and so I was allowed to play a solo. So mm -hmm. I did a solo on Sex Machine or whatever. Yeah, and yeah, it was my moment. Yeah, sure. I liked it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, but on the other hand, it's it's. I think it's kind of nice to experience. The, the music industry or like the situations like your dad playing clubs mm -hmm. and having some success here and maybe less success in another club mm -hmm. and you can watch the whole thing without being you know the test dummy yeah. um, that that actually has to suffer all that stuff so you could watch what your dad exactly. was doing and I, I was but but actually more, not on purpose you know I mean, I was there and I thought, okay, hey, now he's playing with this funk R&B band and uh, it was a different crowd than when he was playing his original stuff. Yeah. Or when he was playing jazz or, I mean, and I was watching the people and what kind of audience he was getting with certain music styles, you know. Yeah. And I always liked this, <coughs> this party thing, you know, when, when people had a good time and they were dancing and, um, yeah, I liked that a lot. Yeah. It had a major impact actually on my nowadays life, on my music I do. Yeah. So when, when, when you were a teenager, you also played covers with your own band or what? Yeah, funny-wise, no. Ah. When, when I started actually, I mean, it was never the plan to, to, to be, a, it didn't even exist in my life. I didn't know about cover music, you know. I yeah. wanted to make my own music mm -hmm. and so I played with, with the guys in my age and we, 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 we had an American singer mm -hmm. that was good. Mm -hmm. um, and we did original music, mm -hmm. you know? and but yeah, I also was recording some stuff with my with my dad's Tascam recorder um, device, you know, yeah. and um, so the cover thing was not so around actually. Mm -hmm. It didn't even even exist in, in 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 my life. I wanted to become I don't know what I wanted to do. You know? I just wanted to play guitar and, yeah. because I liked it so much, and. Um, there was no big goal by that time, but I was still in school, you know, and I put lots of energy and, and love in, the, in, in that instrument. Yeah. But um, I didn't know exactly if I wanted to become a musician, mm -hmm. you know. 
Well, and then I graduated. Mm -hmm. And this was the time when, um, mid 90s, and lots of live clubs, music live clubs closed actually, because there was a big techno movement in the Frankfurt area. Oh yeah. And lots of techno clubs opened up very successfully. I mean, Frankfurt was well, very much known because I think techno, they sometimes say it, it came from Frankfurt. Yeah, yeah. I, I, remember, I remember my first experiencing this kind of electronic music. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was like completely different, you know, yeah. there, there was no guitars, just synth bass yeah. and yeah. drums and, and kind of uh, um, groove only. And mm -hmm. then, you know, the, the, the Frankfurt sound, I don't know if there's a real name with a snap and, you know, Rhythm lots of producers came from, yeah. yeah, they came from Frankfurt or from Darmstadt. Yeah. So lots of. Nosy Katzmann. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Worldwide known songs. Yeah. It came from Frankfurt. Yeah. And so that the 90s were very, very... Um, electronic. Very electronic, yeah. And um, I mean, Frankfurt was huge with this party scene, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, so, so this made me think, ah, should I go, should I become a musician? Or? Yeah, because it was kind of hard to imagine it, that there is a future yeah. for live music when the, when the DJs and the electronic yeah. took over. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, and I, I could see it uh, uh, um, in my father's situation because, of course, he had by this time maybe not so many gigs anymore. Yeah. Yeah. For for a period of time, well, maybe maybe he had I don't know exactly, but but I thought okay, mm, okay, this club is closing where he used to play for a couple of years. Now <laughs> um, it's a techno club, and I thought okay, maybe mm, do something different. You know, it's, yeah. So I started I, I started studying law, but. Mm -hmm. Bullshit. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> at least you tried. But I tried, you yeah, know. Yeah, sure. And I found out pretty quickly. Okay, this is nothing yeah. you should do. You know. Okay. And how did you get back to the music, kind of? Um, so after trying a couple of things, I was working in the in the fashion business also. I always played guitar, you know. But mm -hmm. after a while, I thought, okay, man, do what you what comes from the heart and what you can what you can do best and what you want to do for the rest of your life. And right. what is it? And I thought, yeah. it's, it's the guitar. Yeah. It's the guitar, you know. And so I started picking out the guitar then really heavily. I mean, I practiced really, really a lot. And, um, and you became a sideman, like a hired gun for a couple of bands. This yes. is where I know yeah. Marci Martin Kesici was yeah, one exactly. of them. Was what the other one? So when I picked up the guitar again yeah. and, 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 to, 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 and I decided to become a professional musician or make it for a living, mm -hmm. yeah. um, then I started this, this cover thing, but more in a, yeah, not, not so much in, in the direction, musical direction that we do now, mm. was more open for it, all kinds of stuff. And um, then, I don't know, through spreading a word and through the, through the contacts I had with the keyboard player, then there were kind of auditions for certain pop acts mm -hmm. that went on tour and they had a number one hit and so you were touring and they needed a band and um, like you did with Tic Tac Toe, you know. Ugh, yeah, so space, we did yeah. the same thing and there was a band called Dritte Generation. I mean, yeah. the international people don't know it, of course, yeah. yeah. But the Germans no, maybe yeah. remember it because they had a huge hit, uh, yeah, a huge hit, a number one hit with um, Big Brother. Oh, yeah. It was the, the Big Brother theme, theme song. song. <coughs> and they, they were doing well, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and the band it was part of this, of this um, project. They were so, I mean, great player, great musicians. And we always had really big time fun on, on, on tour, you know. And also the singers were cool. It was all good. It was, yeah. it was I mean, I wanted to do this and I, I, was, I was lucky enough to, to do it and had the chance to do it. And I mean, it was great. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? You've, you've been the hired gun and then yeah. you, you, you became, uh, you, you had this band from the Kamiya. Uh, exactly, yeah. So it was, um, I did this for a couple of years and um, but at the same time, I was also playing in a club in Frankfurt, very yeah. well-known club. It's the King Kamea Club. Yeah. And um, we played there till 2013. And then we went over to the Gibson Club, where we are, where we are still, still actually. Now? Yeah. Yeah. And this is now the urban... It's the urban club band. band. Yeah, we started out at the Gibson in 2013. And if the pandemic 
when it's over, you it, can play again. We can, uh, hopefully, yeah, we, yeah. I had a big pleasure to be invited to play yes, with you yeah. over there. That was fun. And I can tell you guys, it, you know, it's, it is cool because it's a stylish club. It's the right amount of people. I don't know how many thousand people. Or? Thousand fit in, actually. Yeah. But they have a run-through of maybe 1,200, 1,300, yeah. whatever. So, I mean, so it's, on it's a very good crowd. And this band is killer because they hire, or in this band, they have the best singers and they have a huge variety of, of different, at least at that evening where I was joining in, you know, um, what was the... Um, the, the, the black um, soul singer Charles Charles, Charles. Yeah. yeah he's great man yeah and then the the, the blonde uh, female singer uh, Jenny Jenny okay I forgot the name sorry but she didn't forget you because she was mentioning ah oh, that was a great time when oh, we really? played with Thomas yeah okay yeah so I mean it, you know the band is tight like a motherfucker the, the musicians know exactly what are they doing they do care about the audience they they know what they're doing and it, it is a fresh energy that the band puts out and the people appreciate that. Thank you so much. And, yeah, and they, I, I, I mean, I could see that they're dancing, they're having fun. Yeah. This is how it's, you know, if I would do something like that, this would be the reference, you know, I, and I enjoyed it so much. And there was another special guest, the, the drummer of... Uh, Robbie Williams. Robbie Williams? Carl Brazil was playing. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you know, this was all fucked up evening, but this was so great. Yeah. And, and from, uh, from Motorhead. Yeah. The, the guy Mickey, Mickey D. Mickey D was playing. Whatever. You know, <laughs> all kind of stars joined in and, the, and, and it was a special evening. I love this kind of thing. So. Because it was uh, at the same time when the music messe ah, was happening. Yeah. So they were in the city. Yeah. And actually when, when those guys are, are in town because they have gigs somewhere else, yeah. they actually afterwards show up in the Gibson Club. Yeah, because, because it's, it's the coolest it's, place it's to a, hang it's out. A, yeah, yeah, it's a great club. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to, to see that thing live because there's so much lights and VJs. And <coughs> I mean, it's like... Like Las Vegas, you know, you yeah. don't believe it. Yeah. Even me, sometimes I'm going there as a guest. Yeah. Sometimes I have a gig somewhere else, yeah. and then after the gig, I come to see the guys. Yeah. And it's still for me, it's wow. But I know all the songs, I know everything, you know. Yeah. But still, it's it's really catching me, and I think, yeah. damn, this is cool. Yeah. And I like to watch the guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I enjoy it. It's a different you. point of view. You yeah, know? yeah. And it's you can you can be on the floor, you can be on stage. It's a big party. It's a it's a, it's. This is how it should be to have a you know a great evening out when you go to town. So yeah. Frankfurt is a decent city in Germany, and this club is where it's at. And the band, you know, does everything it needs to make this evening special. I, 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 I really enjoyed that evening. Thank you so much. But on the other hand, we are really, uh, uh, we are really working hard for it. You know, it's, it's, I, of course. I mean, it's a weekly thing. It's yeah. weekly. Yeah. And um, you have to, to work on the program. You have to get it tight. And sometimes you have new musicians, then you have to make them tight. I mean, you, yeah. there's no time for, for mistakes. You, know? it's, yeah, 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 you yeah. have to really nail it. Yeah, yeah. Because the audience, they have a high expectation. If you play in a club every week, it's, I mean, every, it's every week, a new week. Yeah, it and needs you have to be to spot on. Deliver, it, you know. And it needs to be fresh. Yeah. And this is what I liked about it. But me too, I like that too, <coughs> because it's, it's really, it's a tough thing, but it's, I mean, it's, it's so enjoyable for all of us. Yeah. And, and the musicians are really into it, and um, it's great. Cool. Okay, now let's talk a bit more about sounds. Mm -hmm. um, I know you being a guy that relates to the clean sounds first. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, this maybe goes back to your father. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You told me. Yeah, yeah. So he, he, your father is kind of a Fender twin guy. Yeah, this direction, a clean. I mean, let's let's say it's we need a, the, the family royal needs a clean bass. You know? so, <laughs> oh, they are so clean. So, you know. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is it's clean. Yeah. Um, and I would say it's it's it's. Twin, definitely twin, yeah. or I remember he was playing, or I was playing. We both were playing jazz, jazz chorus, Roland, Roland yeah. jazz chorus, yeah. the big ones, the heavy ones. I mean, all these kind of amps are heavy. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, this is not heavy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this is, but this is actually the the bass is a loud, clean sound, but not because it's loud, but because it has lots headroom. of headroom, headroom, yeah, yeah and punch. Yeah. And um, I remember that I, my father gave me a. A twin silver face, mm -hmm. 70s silver. It was heavy as shit. Yeah. 
And I remember when I was going to the rehearsals and I was a younger guy, skinny, not so strong. <laughs> And I had to take this, this <coughs> big amplifier into the bus and from there to the rehearsal room. It was, it was pain in the, you know, where. I know, yeah. And, um, but it sounded so good. It was just, you just needed this amp, a cable and a guitar. Mm -hmm. And it was all there. Yeah. So much headroom. Ah, so yeah. nice. Okay. And this is like, this is the foundation of your tone. Yeah. And then you can Ever work since. with the guitar. Yeah. And then you can incorporate some pedals if you like. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So, but you always come back to this kind of reference tone, and and this is this is for you the electric guitar bass, which absolutely, which yeah. is cool. Me personally, I'm mean, I'm a bit more the plexi Marshall kind of guy that also likes clean tones, mm -hmm. especially in the studio when I did this. But you know, my reference point is mostly kind of a plexi ish uh, sound, and. Um, Let's hear a couple of clean tones. I have um, the Princeton here, which is uh, behind you, mm -hmm. which is the Silver Face Princeton. This was kind of one of my first amps that I bought when I was a teenager and did my first stu studio gigs. I had the, somehow the weird situation that I became a studio musician by the age <laughs> of 17. That's great. Yeah, it, I, I just, it happened. Some guy recommended me to a producer and he hired me because I was cheap and I did the job. And um, in the end, uh, who cares, um, they booked me again and again. And here it is. I'm just switching to this. Just to show you guys, I unplugged the cable. So here's the no sound and I yeah. plug it in. Uh, maybe this side. So that's, that's the beloved. Um, Clean Fender yep. Princeton. Yep. It's a nice tone. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have any reverb, yep. but, uh, well, you know, I was 17. <laughs> and then I need a good clean tone. The reverb. It's having actually, it's 20 watts, 15, 10 uh, watts? Yeah, it's 18 watts or 18 so. Watts. Two 6 V6 tubes. Okay. And um, the, a nice tremolo. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's, that's this one. I just get rid of the... The, the tremolo. So, and now, for the guys out there, I'm on the switching system. I try to make a similar tone with the M1, so you know, you know, um, where we are. Uh, maybe no, and maybe, let's try this. M1 is here. That's the Fender. We have reverb is a bit too bright compared. Uh, a little hair of this brightness. Oops. Yeah, I mean, where are we? And this is the M1. I think you can work with this. Yeah. And then, um, of course, I got my reverb in here, which is not in my Fender. <laughs> reverb is so important. I know. I'm a reverb. I need reverb. Without reverb, I can't yeah. play. For me, it's like when I play clean, I need reverb. Yeah. When I play the crunch tones, I'm rather into a, a slight delay. I don't need the reverb, but for clean, it's magic. And yeah. the real spring reverb is still kind of the thing. I don't know about you. Do you have other kind of reverbs that you're going to? I, over the years, I mean, as I'm playing mostly these pedals, you know. Yeah. And, and I always started with actually a spring reverb. That mm -hmm. was the first choice I took. But then they had sometimes other options, like plate or sure. like, I, like... I love plates. Water. And I became a plate fan. Ah. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite reverb in the studio. Yeah. I actually own two EMT plates, All big right. ones. Okay. 
I gave it to friends in studios here. Yeah. So when I recorded my, for instance, uh, Electric Gallery yeah. um, solo album, it's full of my plate reverb. It's the real deal old, how many, four meters long, two meters high and whatever, the heavy shit, you, it takes four people to carry it around. Oh, <laughs> but man. that's the reference and it's, uh, yeah, that's, plate is my thing. Um, maybe show us some of your, what is this, uh, uh, what is this, spec specular reverb or is this? It's, it's, it's from the company GFI. Is it any good? Are, I mean, are we allowed to say names here? Huh? Of course. Are we allowed to say company names? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's GFI. Yeah. I didn't know about them. I think it's kind of, is it from, I don't know, some Asian stuff, but they, they are doing great. They do great stuff. And I mean, the pedal board is really small, as you see. Yeah. So I have to find pedals that do at least more than just one thing. You know? yeah. <laughs> and this does actually <coughs> eight things. Huh. This can be a, this can be, wait a minute. So this can be a reverb. Yeah, but on YouTube, but I have another one, of course, with less reverb. Mm -hmm. It's this. I don't know what kind of reverb, but it sounds good to me. It's to me. It's a, it sounds like a long haul, maybe. Yeah, I like that. Um, like ambient st yeah, style. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it kind of glues together those chords and lines. Exactly, is, but because normally I'm actually using your reverb. Yeah. Go to me, and then if I want to have a little, little bit more, ah, bam, there you top. go, yeah. So double reverb. But it's also a, a, a delay. Ah, okay. This is a delay, yeah. So this is actually my, my, my lead tone delay. I, I, I got you, yeah. Should I do it? Should I? Maybe it's too loud, huh? Go for it. Yes, um, and then you can go over into second thing, and then it's a bit. It's not a mode. Yes. So you have four in the one in the one uh, part, and then another four on the other ones. Wow. Okay. It's great, man. And this is. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's like a little bit like a helicopter. That's the yeah, way yeah. I said it. But I actually yeah. I never use it. But I thought it's okay, there. if you can have it. Yeah. Maybe one day. <laughs> and then there is this. Shimmer. Shimmer with the octave. I can do that for you. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, and so on. I mean, you can you can yeah. add a chorus, you can add a tremolo, you can do yeah. a delay, you can do a reverb. I mean, it's it's. I think it sounds great. Yeah. And it's small. 
Okay, what else is on your pedal board? So, reverb right. is important. Re yeah, that's Polytune, we know. Yeah. Then there is uh, the Hot Tone Wah, which I also have. I have a red one. What's the difference between this and the red one? I think this is more based on, I don't know. Before Whatever. I talk the bullshit now, yeah. if there is a difference, maybe it sounds more like a box and the other one sounds more like a whole like, tone. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. It's, they are, they are great. They are great. Yeah. They are great, okay. man. <laughs> I love them. I have five of these because on any board I have, I want this one. <laughs> okay. I have, awesome. I have only one for my mini board, yeah. but uh, for a mini wah, well, I like them. Cool. So this is um, the Boss Harmonist, which... Yeah, but I use it only in two modes. Uh-huh. Um, Actually, it's it could be a like a chorus, but a good one. So, but I also use it like a, as a as a bemi. Ah, cool. Because when we do this, I mean techno-ish. Yeah. Club music. You need I just, some I mean, it's my, it's, this is my personal fun just to yeah. step over it, on it, and, and do this. <laughs> but also for sometimes we do lots of we do lots of hip hop we do. Yeah. And I just like to sometimes press this and you have like press it. Okay. This is my personal fun, I love that. Okay, cool. The Harmonist PS6. Okay, then we had this thing here. Yeah, which this is brand new, actually. Mm -hmm. It's, I think these pedals are not available in Germany. Uh -huh. um, great guys from California, they are called, it's, the, the, the company is called Sun Audio. Uh -huh. And this is the Nucleus pedal. And it's, I mean, it's, it gives me two modes. It's a dis distortion and a um, overdrive. Mm -hmm. And actually this thing I was playing in the, in the intro. intro song. Yeah. yeah. See, this is... Yeah. Sorry for the noise. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm always very uh, concerned about noise. But this is showing the M1 is the clean platform. Exactly. And you're using a dedicated overdrive yeah. pedal to be your overdrive tone. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong about it. It's because there's uh, like a tradition to play like that. And uh, for me, it's a different thing. But for you, this thing is just like having a, a, a pedal in front of a twin. Exactly. Yeah. That's how I see this M1 actually. Yeah. For me, it's a, it's, yeah. it's a twin. Yeah. Some people use all the four channels. Some people only use one channel. Maybe you switch to another channel once a year. Doesn't matter. You know, it's um, even if you just use one sound of the M1, why not? More than enough. Exactly. As long as I'm using it and I'm using yeah. it, you know. And I mean, I love I love the, the, the other channels in this amp, mm -hmm. but I have to make a decision um, for the EQ, which one I'm using. So okay. it's, of course, the, the clean sound is the winner, yeah? Absolutely. But that doesn't mean that I, I'm not... Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm using the, the EQ at the moment for the clean sound. Yeah, it's... <laughs> and if I switch to the, to the, to the distortion, Lead. yeah. Because you are a twin player. Exactly. <laughs> so I have to go this, back with the mitts. Yeah, yeah. This is like too authentic for a twin player. Yeah. You know, it's like a, a real martial doesn't have the mitts, and you you kind of like the martial tone through a twin, kind of, because this is your reference. And this, this, there is no. I mean, it's all good. I mean, this is why the pedal makes the job for you. Uh, so, so Absolutely. Nice. Um, 
just uh, you know, you being the clean expert, I learned a lot well, from not you. Expert, no, no, no. I mean, I learned from my father. You know, yeah, of course, we all learn from somebody. I learned from you. You learned from your father. Uh, um, what are your settings? Um, th this is the Mercury edition, mm -hmm. and what are your settings? So the clean volume is on. The clean volume is on five. Five, yes. Yeah. Five. And where is the bass? The bass is actually. I mean, now we are playing through the um, blue box. Yeah. Normally, I would play through a speaker, and it would be a little bit different. Different setting. But just um, for now, it's. But for now, I mean, actually. Treble is three. Treble is three, four maybe. Yeah. yeah. Middle is maybe four, three and a half, four. Yeah. <laughs> Bass is maybe five. Okay. That's how I would use the the clean setting. Yeah. And the custom control is it open or? Closed? You know what? I said it once. And you. Long time ago. Let me feel it. I can tell you. Yeah. Please, please don't. I don't know. I know what it is. It's counterclockwise. Hey guys. Yeah, exactly. It's counterclockwise. So it's not so much like a bright. super. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's less bright. bright. Exactly. Okay. So for the guys out there, just to repeat it, no, the the, the real deal twin kind of guy sets the amp one to counterclockwise, and then uses the clean channel without a boost on five, which is actually not like I would use it, mm -hmm. but. Um, it's great because then you have more headroom. I have mm -hmm. it hotter. I have it around 7 ish. Because you want to break up. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, you know, this is Mr. Headroom. And this is great. For me, it's great to get, to get you know, and it sounds killer. This is, this is how I um, think a, a killer clean guitar sound should sound like. Okay. My sound is different. It's also killer. It is a bit more on the edge of breakup. And this is just. Cleanish with all the chuck chuck. Yeah, no breakup. Yeah. No, no, eat, no little break. Nothing. <laughs> so clean. guys, but not sterile. You know, I mean, no, it no, still no, has no. to be warm. It's and, all there. Uh, it's all there. But you get this with volume on five, bass on six, middle was on three and a half, and treble was on three and a half to four. Okay. So important because different setting mm -hmm. from what I usually preach for my tone. Yeah. Cool. So. I'm but they both work. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, hap I'm, I'm happy to see that. Um, what is is that rare? Actually, are that no, most? No, no, no. There are more people like you. Okay. But they come from a different angle. It's like we have uh, Kyle Brown. Mm -hmm. He's a jazz player from oh, yeah. London, yeah, yeah, yeah. UK. Yeah, yeah. And he has similar settings yeah. because he has a similar approach. Okay. Okay. For me, it's something. I wouldn't say rare, but it's not my world. Yeah, yeah. And therefore, I, I really enjoy to have a fresh input, mm -hmm. which is proven to work because I heard you with this board in the in the club, in the band, and I know and how I'm it sounds. And I'm picky about this. I'm really I know, picky. About I know. And the, the 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 first contact I had to uh, I had with the blue with the with the M1, mm -hmm. um, when it came out, I've seen you on the music mezzo playing it. I thought, damn, this sounds great. Mm -hmm. But this can't be loud enough. It can't be. I mean, it was. It looked, looked like a pedal. You know, it's not an amp, but it, 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 it's an amp, of course. But yeah. to me, it was like it's a pedal. Okay, he's playing this into. Okay, can't can't go. Can't work. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, okay, give it a try. So I went to Session Music, bought it, mm -hmm. took it directly to the Gibson Club because <laughs> I I knew the room. We had rehearsal yeah. and afterwards a gig, and I thought, okay, I know this room very well. Mm -hmm. And anything that works at the Gibson Club works anywhere. Works anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a big club and yeah, yeah. it's a huge stage, yeah. and it's it's yeah, what works there works everywhere. And I thought, okay, I, I take it to the to the rehearsal and compare it to the to to the Mesa Boogie Lone Star, which is one of your favorite amps. Absolutely, yeah. great great amplifier, yeah. really gla uh, great clean sound. Mm -hmm. And so I comp compared it back and forth, and I thought, damn, it works, <laughs> it works. Yeah, yeah. Because I thought it won't stay clean. Yeah. Really not, because normally when I play with the band, I mean I have really the master high like, like up up, up here. here. Because you would like the headroom. Yeah, I love that, but it stays clean. There's yeah. no breakup. Yeah, and I remember, and the guys in the band say, hey, "What's that pedal?" I say, "It's not a pedal. It's an amplifier." Ha! <laughs> it's not yeah, an yeah. amplifier. It's it's a, yeah, it is an amplifier. There's a tube, and it's, yeah. okay, whatever. But it worked. Yeah. And that was the day when I I think I called you, and I said, "Damn." It works. <laughs> yeah. Well, this made my life so much easier. Yeah. You know. Yeah. If I imagine as a kid carrying this heavy twin. Oh yeah. And now. Yeah. And by the way, cranking the master is the twin recipe because a twin doesn't have a master. So the master on the twin is kind of all the way up. And 
you don't put the volume on 10 on a twin because this is the way when that twin breaks up, which breaks your ears too. Uh, but yeah, it's, it all makes sense. And then I, I, I gave it to my father. Yeah. And because I thought, okay, it's, I mean, my father is always the, I have to show him when I like something, I show him and yeah. then he, he gives the last verdict, you know? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and if it works, I'll be a happy man, you know? <laughs> and I brought this to my father yeah. and he had actually a bad time in this, in this time, um, uh, health-wise. Yeah. And um, he was playing this thing and he said, what, what is that? And I said, it's, it's, it's M1, it's, yeah. it's an amplifier. Yeah. And he was quiet, he was playing. Yeah. And he was, he was just playing and saying nothing, actually. Yeah. And um, he liked it, too. Mm. He liked it, too. And um, I mean, and now, it was a heavy time by that, by that time, you know, and um, it was kind of med medicine for him, really. He made him play. Yeah, he it, absolutely. And I got him one. I called you. We would yeah, yeah. And then you sent, yeah. I'm, um, I'm, you yeah. sent one and um, I gave it to him and uh, he had so much Fun with, fun it. with it and, and, and he, he's healthy now he's healthy again absolutely yeah. and um, guitar playing is a good healer it's 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 the medicine yeah even in these days with the yeah. pandemic i mean yeah. i'm so happy that that i'm able to play guitar mm. and put all my energy into this instrument and, and music i mean it's really it's a healer cool music is so good okay what what else is on the pedal board this is a this is also a distortion okay. or overdrive by Ulrich Rodenberg. Oh, yeah, it's okay, the, no, the com yeah. commander. It's called commander. Mm -hmm. This is actually my, my 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 pedal that I have on any board. Mm -hmm. This saves my life. In case something goes wrong, I, I just step on here and then it works. <laughs> okay. This is my sound actually. Okay. This is my lead sound since eight years or whatever. Okay. Um, just show a oh, yeah, okay. three notes so we know what's three happening. Three notes. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> So in, it's midi, mid-range. mid, -range. mid, mid Yeah, cool. So I like this. This saves my... And the chase tone? The first this, one? This is, now we're coming to the, to, the, to, the, to the point, actually. This is a EP boost. Ah. So EP this style boost, yeah. let's say. And this is... A sound sweetener. It's more than just a boost. It's not boosting per se, yeah. but it's also making a better sound to me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have different options. You have kind of a. Um, yeah, it's called mid, dark and bright. So you yeah. can choose if you want to have more dark or more on the mid side or more on the bright side. Uh -huh. So this is... Mid section. This would be the darker section. Never need to hear, I think. But, and it's the bright section. So I would go with the mid maybe, maybe the dark. Yeah. So you have this... Um, Maybe we have to explain a little bit about EP for the yeah. ghost guys who don't know. EP comes from the Echoplex. Exactly. And the Echoplex. Huge machine. Yeah, it was a tape echo. Yeah. And, you know, back in the days, um, you know, they, they built tape machines to repeat the echo, but they had a preamp, mm -hmm. and the preamp was giving a color to the tone. A certain color that everybody liked. Yeah. I mean, Eddie Van Halen used yeah. it for Eric his, Johnson. Eric Johnson used it. And many people. Many use people, it. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, if we look at this kind of preamps, um, it is a couple of aspects technically. One is maybe EQing. This is when you switch to bright, you know, and mm -hmm. then it enhances the high end. Yeah. And you go to the mid boost and it enhances certain mid frequencies. But on the other hand, it also does a kind of little compression exactly. but, but in a way that is musical it i mean you know if you have a a, a dead compression 
a pedal which kind of sucks all the energy of your attacks. This is not musical. This is not to designed to be a compressor. No. But, but the circuit of an Echoplex has a gives you transients, gives you direct signal, and somehow there is an element of compression with it. Mm -hmm. And I know that you are junkie for these pedals. I became a junkie. Yeah. But it started last year with a pedal that my, my father actually showed me. Yeah. Again, it was him. You know? <laughs> yeah, and then I was, I was reading about it and I thought, what is that? Yeah. And then it's the first time that I actually uh, um, heard about Echoplex. And um, so I was reading it up on in the internet and on forums. And man, it's, there's a whole religion behind it, actually. And um, so, yeah, I was looking for these Echoplex style pedals and it's, it's hard to find them. Yeah, well, I find a box here. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in this box we have... Uh, a, a this is brand new. It's still hot, actually. I bought it on Monday through oh. eBay. Okay. And it arrived today. Cool. And I was checking it out for a short moment, and this sounds killer. Okay. Put it here. Yeah. On the, uh, so it's we a do-it-yourself thing from a guy who yeah. was making it. But I think there's kind of a construction kit behind it. So you can buy the construction kit and then... Follow the, the, the numbers or whatever. Yeah. And then uh, when, great. You're, great. when you're lucky. Cheap and great. Okay, good. Cheap and great. We love it. This is the, the, the classic EP booster by uh, Exotic. Um, yeah, but I never knew, I never knew wh why the e what, what, what the EP meant. <laughs> it was just, for me, it was a clean booster. Okay, so I, yeah. I put it on my board. But I was never, I never thought about this EP. Yeah, Echo Place. I later found out. Okay. Well, well. It is a echo place. What is about the story about this one? Um, Chase Tone. These are from this. They both from the same company, ah, and this okay. is the first version. Yeah. It's called Golden Secret Preamp, and yeah. this is the, only the secret preamp. And the difference is, <clears throat> this has this toggle switch on the side, and only has two options. Ah. And I think it's the dark and the bright. Yeah. And this one is also having a mid. mid. And the mid is. And the mid, mid is, is well. It depends on the amp. Yeah. It course. depends on the amp, really. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And but I I, um, I went to a friend of mine who actually it's Martin Schmitz from Parma. Yeah. Parma, he yeah. was yeah great guy, and we added a trim pot inside, so I can now also get the Smith sound from ah, here. Ah, okay. Know? Okay. So I got this one. Yeah. What is this thing here? The boost. Lunar Stone. Yeah. I actually also got it from eBay, and uh, it's great. It also has a little compression thing going, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it sounds also great. And that's the pedal that s started it all, actually, last year. Mm -hmm. It's a company called Henretta. I think it's a, it's a great guitar player, Kevin Henretta, and he does lots of pedals in, in this style. So no knobs outside, it's all internally. Mm -hmm. And um, this was the pedal actually that was on my dad's board. Mm -hmm. And I was playing in his house and he sometimes just lets the playback run and said, I come play a little bit and I played over his board and I was playing on it. And then he said, well, step on this thing. And then and I stepped on this thing and I thought, damn. Yeah. yeah. It, it's not much, Yeah, but, but it's, it's exactly where you think, damn, this yeah. is so sweet. This is so good. Okay, okay, we will find out okay. in a minute. So, so the thing about pedals in general is, yeah. I mean, you know, if you have a guitar and mm -hmm. an amp, mm -hmm. the pedal is like the adapter that brings out the extra. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm a pedal nerd like you, a little bit in a different direction. I also enjoy the EP style things, but I enjoy those more for the overdrive thing. They sound excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Let's 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 try something here. Wait a minute. I'm um, okay. I got power here. Let's see if that works. I mean, this is all live. Let's start with the classic EP. Mm -hmm. um, ah, there, oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. Oh, the good world Velcro. So we. St this has no Velcro. I can yeah. tell. Right? That's a good one. <laughs> so um, let's see if that works. Center negative, and a patch cable. Maybe we have a patch cable somewhere here. Okay, this is the output. And I use this instead. As you can see, guys, I'm using the switcher to switch between... Uh, I had the Princeton versus the M1. And actually, we have another amp there at the basement. Yeah. 
too many things to try out, but any. So let me go. Wait a minute, I go and go a little bit more towards your settings. Um, because... So where did, did you put this on five and you put these... What was the mids were a bit lower, right? The mids is roughly... Four. Yeah, close to four. Yeah, and the treble again. And counterclockwise, so this is... Okay, this is with the EP boost. Okay. You know what? This is actually now on the lowest. Yeah. And it's a bit, for, me, for me, it's a bit too loud. I like it. Almost more unity gain. Unity gain. And it, this is not. It's not possible with this. Yeah. Ah. Okay. So See, I mean, hear the difference. Play something, yeah. please. It jumps. It already. jumps too much. Especially if you put, I put the the boot after the dirt. Yeah. So I don't want to um, make the dirts more dirtier. I want to yeah. just give it more volume. You know? Yeah. And so this is a bit, a bit too, too much. much. I really hear it actually here. Yeah, but it, I know in a live situation, things are totally different. And I know, you know, you are playing with the... It's the same with this for me. Yeah. It, if you're using it as a booster, it's great. Yeah. But as it, a color, it, it would need an, a little bit more unity. It needs to be a little bit lower. And then I would be... I mean, it sounds great. A bit brighter on the brighter side? Yeah, yeah. It, just, I mean, we have it here built in. So, this is the M1. This is all the way up, just to compare it. Yeah. Um, now I go down, but I designed this boost to be like an extra bright switch with overtones. Yeah. This is like out. It's like mid rangey and, and 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 nice and warm and jazzy. And then this this kind of gives you sparkle, you know, it's a sparkle switch. And when I crank it. It kind of already starts Breaks to up. break up. Yeah. I mean, different approach. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm I'm not even saying this is an EP style. No, 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 yeah, no, no. Yeah. Okay, so guys, let's try to be a little bit analytic about those pedals. So we yeah. have this one. Next. I mean, this, this pedal has lots of fans, and it's, it's a good pedal, definitely. But, you know, for me, for, for my needs, it's a bit too... What is the best one, this one? Well, let's, let's start with this. This, okay. this started everything. Okay. Uh, this is input. Sorry for the, the hum. That's me. Um, and this... And there's an internal switch, so you can choose between bright and dark. And there's also an internal trim port where you can, I mean... Um, which is the volume knob, actually. Okay. Compressed, yeah. But it stays clean. Yeah. And um, it has it. It makes sound your. It makes your guitar sound more expensive. More expensive. Again, this gives you more volume. More volume, but yeah. that's the way my father said it, actually. He yeah. said, don't, don't touch it inside. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't screw it and, and, yeah. and work internally. And I said, no, no, we don't touch it. So for me, it would be, at this point, it would be a bit too loud. Yeah, but you can adjust it. You can adjust it okay. internally. But I totally dig the sound, the sound. of it. Yeah. yeah, I want it. The thing about this episode is, I will end up with a new pedal. I have the feeling right now. They are hard to find, man. Oh, really? I'm actually every day I'm looking on eBay for hand yeah. pedals. There's nothing inside. I know that. Um, no worries. I can open it. In the you know what? Um, they all have a voltage doubler internally. Uh -huh. I like pedals with. This also has an internal voltage doubler. More headroom. More headroom. Yeah. 
it secrets, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I think one of the reasons why, why, why I personally like these pedals. Cool. Let's try the next candidate just for fun. So we, this is a good one. Let's check this one. So we hear. I wonder if the people hear this through YouTube. They hear the difference, it. yeah? I think so. Because YouTube is pretty I, I compressed. I can hear it very clearly. I hear it that, that much. I, I know how the YouTube is not that uh, defined. Oh, the light is, oh yeah, it's on. It's. Gives me a more presence, but it's, this has magic. It's, it's exactly. It's more neutral, you know? yeah. it's more also, I think. Yeah. It, it's fine. It's a fine, 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 fine small pedal for yeah. small boards. Yeah. But the tone is. Uh, the green one is still. So forget this one here, just clean up. So, and this is another EP. That's the, the do it yourself thing. Ah, yeah. And I was already comparing it today at my father's house with this thing. Yeah. And it's... Judge yourself. Ah, oh, I have... We have also three possibilities. Yeah. I think the left one is the, the brightest. The mid one is... Yeah. And the right one is a bit too much. But maybe some people... Like it. It's really, big on the really on the big Pretty good. This is very close to this one. I, I prefer yeah. the green one. Um, you know how we do it? We have both in series with another patch cable. Handwriter. Hmm. It's another. Hard to find. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay. Uh, My father has two. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> No worries, no worries. So, okay, let's do the AB thing a bit faster. Extra power from this gentleman here. Ah. See, there's a question. Can we, why not make an amp zero that only has the clean channel? We were talking about this. You remember yeah, sure. this? And we should yeah. actually add a echoplex. <laughs> <laughs> we have options. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why is it Okay, now we have two Both of those. Running, yeah. Okay, first n none. This one. Well, this is exactly my taste. Your dad has my taste. <laughs> Welcome to Vespa. <laughs> Okay, nice winner. Okay, then we have to chase. Let's, let's, do, let's do, please play this again. Okay, let's. I will. Um. Now it's both. It's it's the same. It's dynamic. close. It's it, close. It, it's close. It's close. I think in the band thing, band ah. situation. I mean. Okay. All right. I'm I'm still. I'm, yeah, yeah, I, I, I like know. them. I, I, I like them, but I'm the the, the the green one is my yeah. my favorite so far. Let's let's check this one. I bought so many <laughs> <laughs> others because I can't get this one. Man. Well. Um, Probably. Okay. Okay, that's brighter. That's a starker. There's like an internal trim pot where you can adjust 
the the between these two. That's. I mean, it's, uh, it's the pedal, maybe. It's maybe the power here. See, that's the power. Once I right. get rid of this, is this true bypass? No, it's I not. don't know. It's not, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, ah, this is not the perfect power supply. Doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> Switch between the yeah, two. Yeah, of course. If I trim the entire trim part, I can maybe get closer. get closer to this one. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Anyway, this is exactly what I like. Okay. <laughs> so now we have this, but this is locked in. Yeah, yeah. Le leave it there. But, uh, you know, if it's the same company. But I would like to know, man. Yeah. But how to do that? We just need a cutter, actually. Ah, no, no, no. Come come on, come on. We do this after the episode. Otherwise, okay. We, okay. We, we are way too long. So this is, um, this is kind of interesting. Uh, how these little nuances actually give you that much of, uh, yeah, the kind of the sweet spot, oh. <laughs> the sweet spot, and and thereby making you happy. And this is the beauty of a pedal board that you can find your happy maker and put it on the pedal board. <laughs> Okay, switch it off just for fun. Now I do my thing with my boost break up. Show you that it's another world, which is also nice. Yeah. No? And then. But this is cleaner. Nice. Okay, great one. Um, hmm. I think we do have a couple of questions at this point that I should answer. Okay. I'm afraid that we can't do them all because uh, yeah, time is flying by. But let's see. Bruno Bemi, could you please show boosting the power amp via effects loop with these boosts again? Sure. Let's do something simple. I just unplug this. And I use this beautiful pedal now in the loop. So we have the EP booster in the effects loop. I need another patch cable. Uh, actually, that's the return. Can you have this? Oh, let's just put it aside. And this is the send. The scent goes in here. So, and this should be working like. Ah. Ah. Okay, see? Now it doesn't. No, I tell you what it is. This is face reversed. Because I put the effects yeah, yeah. on parallel. Little, yeah. And when I plug it, uh, when I switch it on, in front of the amp, it was louder. Mm -hmm. Now, now it's. it's it is less mm -hmm. loud, mm -hmm. which means unscrewing the thing. <laughs> we, yeah, you I mean, okay. do it, technically, it's not a perfect design because yeah. when I would design a pedal, I would always make it in phase. If you put it in front of the amp, not a problem. If you put it in the effects loop on serial, not a problem. If you put it in the effects loop on parallel, mm. problem. So now I'm on serial here. <laughs> That's the job. Fine. All good. So this is what we learn. And what was the question? Yeah, we can put any of these pedals in here. I showed in another episode there is a volume increase, and then after uh, when when I when I increase it by uh, let's say 10 dBs, mm -hmm. the nanotube starts to break up mm -hmm. because the nanotube is kind of in the power amp stage. Okay. So when the level from the effects return is too hot, the nanotube will do something. Okay. Please double check this episode. I think it was, how we are 43 now, maybe 
I think it was beginning of the year. Um, and, and then there's a beauty about it, which is the breakup thing. But if you don't want the breakup thing like you, mm -hmm. I'm always preaching this. You need not the bluegy, you need the minus booster. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, Orion. Yeah, um, which is just a passive potentiometer in a box that reduces the level. And then you're not saturating the, the nanotube. Okay. And I love, uh, there's a sound that is great when you boost it and there's a sound when you reduce it. Okay. I mean, when you reduce it, the sound doesn't change. When you boost it, it's getting louder, but then it's getting richer as well. Okay. I show it because how much dB is this doing? Is this doing a lot? I, I think they are not doing so much. It's yeah, more focused on the sound. Do we have one? Uh, I think I have a pedal here that makes more dBs. Let's try this one just for a quick comparison. Okay, this is send, this is return. Yeah, the pedal works because it's with batteries. And this is... Okay, this is like... And now I do something extreme. Sorry. <laughs> so, this is saturation from the tube. In a certain range, it sounds actually nice. This is totally neutral. Just to do this one more. Oh, sorry, guys. Um, just to show you, this is the minus boost passive control. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, here's your volume. It's gone. So this is just only a clean volume or level. Yep. This is level and no coloration yeah. mm -hmm. change. Okay, next question. Thorsten Heidrich. Hey Thomas, one question for the MX. Do you think about to put gain regulation on the X-Wing? Gain regulation. We have expression pedals, options on the MX and uh, you can assign the gain to the expression pedal and then you can do what you expect here. Marcel Huber, hey Thomas, do you think uh, you could invite Gregor Hilden? Um, Gregor would be a nice guest too, but um, here's the thing. Gregor, we played some tour together. You know Gregor? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, he's, uh, we did a tour with three guitar players, it was me playing the Strat, Jerry Donahue, Mr. Telecaster, yeah. and Gregor, Mr. Les Paul. And um, yeah, Gregor is killer. He lives in North Germany, which is a five hour drive from here. So whenever he is touring towards Southwest where we are here, I try to invite him. Thanks for the hint. He's on my list anyhow, <laughs> um, Gregor Hilden. Um, Paul Schlachter, can Mick talk a little about his pickups? Ah, mm -hmm. what are your pickups? I see a humbucker. Yes, um, so I th this is a Doug Aldridge. Doug Aldridge, yeah. which is a... From Zur, Zur. Yeah, Zur, 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 yeah, yeah. You know Doug, he played in Whitesnake. Doug played, yeah. I mean, he's a real rock guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. he has a, a pickup that you like. I, lo I love it, I yeah. love it actually. But um, there's also a splitting mode. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I like this position if it's between these two. And these yeah. are DiMazio area, I think this is area 61. Mm -hmm. And this should be uh, also a DiMazio. I think it could be a, a fast track or a BC1. I think mm -hmm. it's not a BC1, but it's, it's, 
it's one, it's a pickup that is pretty close to the BC, BC1 mm -hmm. from the measurements. I mean, there's a, there's a pickup picker and you can choose how many mids and blah, blah, blah. And this is very close to the BC1. So it's my, my, I mean, it's, It's jazzy enough. Yeah. I mean. And um, it's, to me, it sounds fine. Sorry, I was okay. I was just checking if it's if the playback is still there. Yeah, it's still there. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, okay, this, these are the pickups. Next question, which speaker do you use, Mick? Me? Yeah, you have a 112. Well, I mean, this one, Yeah. this is a 112, and I think it's a Jensen Blackbird. Do they exist? Black, I think so. I think it's a, a, a Neodymium speaker, pretty light. Let me check. It could be a Jensen it could be Blackbird, a but I have, I, have, I have all kinds of... I know you have all kinds of speakers. It's a Jensen, but it's so dark I can't see. <laughs> ah, we have a, a I torch. Think, I think oh. it is a... <laughs> a torch. It says Jensen Jet Series. Jet Series, ah. Okay. Yeah, it's a Jet, yeah, Jet. Okay. Um, Okay, sorry. Mm. Yes, this, you remember you, you once came to me and we were yep. talking about different... Um, Neo speakers. Neo speakers. So I like these actually a lot. Cool. They're pretty light and they sound good to me. And um, this amp is something also quite exciting. Just for the fun of it, let me hear it. Uh, can you switch on the... The, the the pipe uh, uh, on the back there's a the, um, the standby switch standby fuck I forgot the name. okay should I do it no then switch it off fair <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so maybe I used the wrong output uh, sorry we have to listen to this amp next time because then I switch it off switch it off yeah yeah it's better. I did something, but it's not broken. I'm sure. I, I know cool. what I'm doing. Yeah, cool. Um, okay, next question here. Marcel uh, Huber, would be interesting to change the dip switches for the exotic uh, Echoplex because the default there is plus three. Ah, dip switches, did you try? Of course. Ah, okay. Just last week because I thought, okay, maybe I did a mistake, but it's on the lower frequency so it's not the the 3d 3db booster is not on it's on the low and the bright switch is also i think i'm in yeah it's it's the not the bright switch the darker switch i think yeah so yeah i was checking it out of yeah. course okay um there's a german question uh, did you study music or um uh, what's the name of the green pedal again the company is called henretta Henretta, and it's called Emerald Prince, right? Yeah, Emerald Prince, yeah. yeah. So the prices will go up. <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, sorry. You know, I wish stock I had exchange, I you know, wish. invest in green pedals. And they are so hard because to find. two stupid guys love a green I, pedal. I think I got to order one from the States. <laughs> this is the end now. We, you know, we told the secret. It's and I bought like... so many other pedals to find out that still this is the first one I listened to is still the best one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, it's, I mean, this is always like that. Um, okay, next question here. We have a hurry up because the neighbors will complain we won't. Oh, really? To. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, would be interested, Fabio, Mick Guitar, no, we could. Bill Rand. EP clean boost first or last in the chain? With me? Yeah. Always last. Last. Okay, that's a clear answer. Um, 
Mr. Blue, can you explain the clean sound of Eric Johnson? Stereo twin, two delays, yes. Maybe let's do an extra episode on that one because Eric Johnson is doing something very special with his setup um, and all his tones are actually uh, elaborated in a way. We talk about this in a special and, episode. And he's also using EP booster. Yeah, yeah. But the big ones from the Echoplex. Yeah. I was see, I've seen that on his uh, rig rundown one day and I yeah. thought, damn, what is... What? I think it has two of these. It has two. And I thought, damn, what are these two big things there? And then I found out, okay, it's the Echoplex. Mick Rose has a question. Mick uh, Rose? Mick Rose? Mick Rose? I don't know. Uh, anyway, what are the characteristics of an original EP booster as to their frequencies, materials, etc.? Well, hey. They all vary, I think. They also all vary. Some were good, some were not so good. It is a tube device. It's from JFAT, I think. It's based on the JFAT? No. No. The, the original EP1, okay. the Elector, uh, was a tube device. Exactly. Second and the EP2 as well? EP2, I think, was already transistor, and the EP3 was definitely transistor. Yeah. So, this is a whole thing. And the tube one, I had one for the Reflex, yeah. uh, which was the Houston Kettner mm. uh, tape echo mm. that I've done with Houston Kettner back in the days. This was a very dark sounding one, but I heard another one later on, which was sounding differently. Yeah, they were all differently. Hey guys, um, I think we come to the point where we will play our last song. Oh yeah. And uh, more questions uh, next week. Who you uh, have as a guest? Do you have a guest? Yeah. Um, that's actually a good question. I have a few options and I haven't decided yet. Everything is kind of last minute. But last last episode was great with Rich. Rich, yeah, yeah. He's I'm, a nice guy, man. Yeah, Rich. He na he's, he's a native. He, he's native English. Yeah, yeah. He's he's from uh, the north of of, of uh, the UK. Um, I met him with uh, the company JHS, where the vintage guitars, where's mine uh, outside, uh, are made, and it, it's Leeds. Uh, okay. You know, and um, he moved to Germany. He married uh, to the area here. Yeah. Now now he lives here, and uh, ah, I know him for over ten years. Yeah. And then um, he actually translated the M1 uh, instruction manual oh, okay, cool. in 2013 yeah. before we released the AMP. And um, now he works for us. Yeah. I, yeah. I really enjoyed last, last episode. It was great with him. Absolutely. Fine so guy. I try to be Mr. Blug again. Let, let me see if I get my vintage channel. Okay. And here. I have too much delay, who gives a fuck? I ah, know. Okay. okay, and here, five, 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 five. So, okay, you told us the song, and here we go. Thank you. 
how cool is that? <laughs> we found the ending. Hey guys, see you next week. Thanks to Mick Wall. Guys, and thanks for having me. It was a pleasure for yeah, me being maybe here. Maybe see you again. In Saarbrücken. Yeah, Saarbrücken. And um, see you next week. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.